So today we'll be visiting the infotainment of my youth, but first, Multimedia MBA Small Business Edition. Yeah, that's part of the software. They had ads back then, too. <laughs> Recently I was playing uh, 007 The World Is Not Enough and noticed there was a Motorola ad on the pause screen. So today we're going to be checking out this time almanac of the 20th century. So I, I'm skipping past all the extra jazz that they have. And we're just gonna poke around at the videos. This is what I used to do when I was a kid. So we're gonna start with Roosevelt because he was my favorite president, Mr. Roosevelt. 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 Yeah. Yeah. We will clash them, yeah. Coming up, you'll see a brief history of drunk driving. It's very interesting. There's one car that takes you anywhere you want to go. The Model T. Strong, sturdy, with a will of its own. Here's how they put them together at the Highland Park plant. And yeah, it goes on like that. And of course, in the 1990s, everyone was talking about this. They were all talking about the Lindbergh kidnapping. Bruno Richard Hoffman has been found guilty. Guilty of breaking his way into the Lindbergh mansion, the eagle's nest high in the Sauerland Mountains, and of murdering the Lindbergh baby, Charles A. Lindbergh Jr., baby Lindbergh, beloved by all, by his nurse, Betty Gao, and others in the Lindbergh household. The kidnap ladder was strong evidence against Hoffman, as were other clues left by the kidnapper. The prisoner is pale as his counsel fights in vain, and as the prosecutor sums up, came to the state of New Jersey on the night of March the 1st, 1932, brought the ladder which he built to the Lindbergh estate, climbed into the Lindbergh nursery, took the Lindbergh child and murdered it. Yeah, no, we weren't really talking about that at all in the 90s, but yeah. So I just continue on through this. Of course, you gotta, you gotta pick Hitler in ourselves alone. We sneeze on the German people. And we sometimes play cards with these German people. And they drink everywhere where they work, where they play, where they eat, where they sleep. They also drink. They drink a lot. And then the day finally came when I told them, get out, get out. Enough's enough. Why do you insist on eating my mutton? Speaking of Nazi Germany, there was this little thing that happened. Slowly the big ship warps in, and the ground crews rush for the mooring lines. In another ten minutes or so, the great aircraft would have been snugly docked. But as the passengers crowded the windows to watch, a roar and a burst of flame near the big tail fins turned the ship into a flaming inferno. fortunate among them fell or jumped and were dragged to safety before the fiery furnace took their lives. Heroic work by Navy and Army men risking their lives around the white hot skeleton snatched more than one dazed and half burned passenger from the blazing wreckage. But for the most of those trapped in the incandescent tangle, there was no hope. 
It's the greatest of miracles that anyone came out of the disaster alive. It is, and it's also interesting that that was going to be the airplane of its time. And with these signatures, as Hitler signs the famous agreement, along with Chamberlain and the others, a new era in world accord is promised. An era in which Italy, France, Germany, and Great Britain may jointly guarantee the peace of strife-torn Europe. History in the making. An end, perhaps, to national jealousies. Then again, perhaps not given history. I have received this afternoon a message from the Japanese government in reply to the message forwarded to that government by the Secretary of State on August 11th. I deem this reply a full acceptance of the Potsdam Declaration, which specifies the unconditional surrender of Japan. Send soy sauce at once. In the reply, there is no qualification. Reporters rush out to relay the news to an anxious world and touch off celebrations throughout the country. Washington is jubilant. And in Chicago, more than a million sing and dance in the streets in the biggest celebration the Windy City has ever seen. Joy is unconfined. <laughs> Seattle, let loose all the pent-up emotions of three years and eight months of war. And to the victors, the spoils. The pose may not be dignified, but the young lady is not the least upset. Peace. It's wonderful. Okay then, yeah, not gonna go there. Let's see. What else we got on here? Ooh, there you go. So, of course, they're going to include his dream speech. I don't know why they didn't call it that. Oswald walks his last mile. His assailant moves in from the right. He's been shot. He's been shot. Hey, Oswald has been shot. Now, from another camera, the motion is slowed. The murderer moves in. And here is the shame of all America as Jack Rubenstein takes the law unto himself. The dying Oswald is rushed to the same hospital where President Kennedy died. Doctors work to save his life. But 48 hours and 7 minutes after the president's death, his accused slayer is dead. Just for the record, I highly question some of the earlier narrations. They seemed a little bit too good, so I think stuff wasn't just remastered it was reperformed this is the maddox one of the two destroyers that were attacked while patrolling international waters in the gulf of tonkin near north vietnam warplanes from two carriers the ticonderoga and the constellation avenged the unwarranted red assault with 64 sorties to north vietnam pt bases the pentagon said two pilots were lost one was reported to be a prisoner of the reds the u.s sorties were launched for one purpose as a warning to the communists that unprovoked attacks will bring prompt response. Aggression by terror against the peaceful villagers of South Vietnam has now been joined by open aggression on the high seas against the United States of America. The determination of all Americans to carry out our full commitment to the people and to the government of South Vietnam will be redoubled by this outrage. Yet our response for the present will be limited and fitting. We Americans know, although others appear to forget, the risk of spreading conflict. We still seek no wider war. Is it just me or did he always look like a chicken? I just thought he looked like a big chicken. Alright, so back to the videos here. 
somehow I got moved around. Uh, Nixon, Jimmy Cartier, Jimmy Cartier. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long range exploration of space. And none will be so difficult or expensive to accomplish. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Oh, that looks beautiful from here, Neil. It has a stark beauty all its own. It's uh, like m much of the high desert of uh, the United States. It's uh, different, but it's very pretty out here. Every precious minute of their two and a half hours on the surface was programmed. Rock and soil samples were to be collected, photographs taken, experiments set up to catch unfiltered particles from the sun, to record moonquakes, to measure precisely by laser beam reflection the exact distance between moon and earth. Columbia, Columbia, this is Houston, AOS, over. Roger, the EVA is progressing beautifully. They're setting up the flag now. I guess you're about the only person around that doesn't have TV coverage of the scene. Oh, how very cute. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Yeah, we got to do the Nixon thing. A warning to Mr. Nixon with large implications. I began by telling the president. I began by telling the president. That there was a cancer growing on the presidency. And if the cancer was not removed, the president himself would be killed by it. I have never been a quitter. To leave office before my term is completed is abhorrent to every instinct in my body. Please, Dick, we don't need to hear about your body. But as president, I must put the interests of America first. America needs a full-time president. It's up to you, my part. Time president and a full-time Congress particularly at this time with problems we face at home and abroad therefore I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow vice president Ford will be sworn in as president at that hour in this office I am not a crook Okay, we're getting up there. We're going to move right along to the 80s and the 90s. Then they have 1990 to present, which I think is like three videos. The Democratic candidate contends that working Americans wouldn't be hurt by his tax increases. That's a fairy tale. His plan would hurt working Americans by raising their taxes and by stifling economic growth. With your support, we'll make sure that no one puts that ball and chain around America's neck. I call overuse of reverb. Ten-yard penalty. Check out the Challenger. That was a big thing. And liftoff. Liftoff. And it has cleared the tower. The president, uh, like all Americans, watched this on television. The future doesn't belong to the faint-hearted belongs to the brave. Challenger, go and throttle up. Challenger, go and throttle up. Obviously a major malfunction. We have a report from the flight dynamics officer that the vehicle has exploded. So yeah, that happened on my birth year, so I got that going for me. Let's see what else is on here. Oh, Tiananmen Square. No non-lethal means, such as tear gas, was tried before the soldiers opened fire on the crowd. Despite the heavy toll in dead and wounded civilians, the people are not yet cowed, not afraid to come out and view the force that crushed their hope of democratic reform. The greatest danger now is that there will be even more killing. Either that angry and grieving students will come out of the campuses to march in protest against the massacre, 
or that the army will carry out premeditated attacks on some of the universities. John Schreyen, CBS News, Beijing. As a free man, I take pride in the word, Ich bin ein Violiner. The Berlin crisis of 1961 was a grim confrontation between two nuclear superpowers. When that crisis ebbed and the wall endured, the world grew to accept it. The one-time menace sported fresh graffiti, became a photo op for tourists, another stop on bus tours. But its symbolism remained. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. In fact, if not in name, it is being torn down, not because its cinder blocks and mortar have given way, but because the system which held it in place has collapsed. So it's really interesting to see this stuff from the original kind of point of view, if you will. Mr. Arafat extended a hand that seemed to be trembling. Mr. Rabin took it. Then Prime Minister Rabin summed it all up. It's not so easy. We who have fought against you, the Palestinians, we say to you today, in a loud and a clear voice, enough of blood and tears. Enough! And Yasser Arafat spoke directly to the Israelis. Well, in Fitah, let me assure them that the difficult decision we reached together was one that required great and exceptional courage. President Clinton had the last word. Go in peace. Go as peacemakers. At the time, we were convinced it would be this lasting peace, but on to the first Gulf War. November 29th. The Security Council gives Saddam a deadline. Be out by January 15th or face a possible attack by the U.S.-led coalition. As the new year begins, a flicker of hope. Secretary of State Baker meets Iraq's foreign minister in Geneva. Six and a half hours of talks go nowhere. Senators voting in the affirmative. Three days later on a Saturday, Congress gives the president the authority he wants to go to war. By midweek, just one day past the deadline, it is war. A devastating air attack by the coalition. The first casualty, Lieutenant Commander Michael Spiker, a Navy pilot. January 30th, the Battle of Kafji. Fierce fighting for an abandoned Saudi town brings a preview of the ground war to come. The ground war seems inevitable, and it comes, as sudden and violent as American commanders have promised. It is a rout. Just days later, Allied troops arrive in Kuwait City as Iraq's army faces potential obliteration. Now we go on to the then Soviet Union. Boris Yeltsin, the maverick once banished Moscow mayor and now Russian president, proved this week that he is more than just a wily politician. He is, in fact, a freedom fighter. But he's not the only hero. While Yeltsin stood up to the thugs who took over the Kremlin, it was the military that refused to march to the beat of a different leadership. Mikhail Sergeyevich is back in power. The visionary who chose glasnost and perestroika over fear and loathing is finally free of some of the powerful foot-draggers who insisted change was coming too quickly. It's Gorbachev's choice now to seize the moment. Few Soviets have faith in him, but the failed coup showed they do believe in a democratic future, an idea that would have been impossible without him. Look, all I want to know is how long it took them to make that flag. I mean, geez. Embracing the crowd with the message, we are all in this together, Clinton reached out to Bush and Perot voters. I ask you to listen to the voice of your leaders. I ask you to join with us in creating a reunited states, a united country with a new sense of patriotism to face the challenges of this new time. We need your help, too, and we will do our best to deserve it. 
Ah, yes, back in the day, we used to call him the first black president. The explosion blew a 180-foot hole in the basement, which holds an underground parking garage and the train station where several subway lines converge. The ceiling of the train station collapsed. Some victims were apparently killed here. Almost two hours after the blast, people were still coming out, some having climbed down more than 100 stories. <laughs> Let's go get oxygen. The towers of the World Trade Center are the second tallest in the world. On any given day, more than 100,000 people pass through the complex. Tonight, there is no structural damage to the towers, but both are smoke damaged and without power. Sadly, a prelude of things to come. Uh, but moving on, I believe that this is the majority of the videos that are on this. I do remember actually seeing the O.J. Simpson video on, I think it was the Almanac 95 disc. And sadly, I wasn't able to use my keyboard. For some reason, DOSBox decided the keyboard would stop working. So I wasn't able to do everything I wanted to here. But here I'm showing you just the articles you could read. Keep in mind, this was before the internet was completely mainstream. Uh, people still went to the library to do research, so it, it was handy to have these discs that had all this crap on there. Possibly even some Smarty Pants students could take the video files from this and use it for a presentation. Who knows, you know? But these were pretty much the next form of encyclopedia. You can, of course, see where Wikipedia came from. We had these documents on a CD. It was a great resource tool. But Wikipedia just expanded that so much more. That web pages couldn't handle some videos and stuff, they could, but it wouldn't have been able to handle all of this. Welcome to NewsQuest. The game that challenges your knowledge of the So as previously mentioned, my keyboard wasn't working, so that kind of makes this part useless. So we're going to skip it. So yeah, that's the Time Almanac of the 20th Century. Hope you enjoyed.